Welcome to this video on procedural shading in Blender. This is going to be an introduction style video, so if you don't know that much about um, procedural textures and things, this should be a good introduction. Uh, in this video we're going to be learning how to make this sand texture from scratch. We're not going to be using any wave textures for this. Um, the only texture we need for this is a noise texture, and then we're going to be using the coordinate system to do all the other math. And if you don't know what coordinates are, don't worry, I'm going to go over that in this video. So yeah, let's jump right into it. So in Blender, I've just set up this little scene with a basic plane, and I'm going to go into the shading tab, and I'm going to set this to rendered mode, not material preview, and set this to cycles. Everything I'm showing here will work in EV2. I just prefer the look of cycles, and it doesn't have to compile shaders, which makes it a bit faster for me to work in. I'm going to turn off scene world so I can preview this with some lighting. And then I'm also going to turn under film, set this to transparent so that we just focus on the plane. I'll add in a shader, call this our sand. And now the basis for all procedural texturing starts from the texture coordinate node. So I'm going to add one of those in. And now you'll see we have different outputs here. The main three that I use all the time are generated object and UV. And the others I don't really tend to worry about too much. UV you might be familiar with. This is an artist-defined um, coordinate system. It comes from unwrapping the mesh. I'm not going to go into it too much. It's more of a modeling thing. But essentially the coordinates start from 0 and go to 1 on this tile. And um, every surface point in here receives a coordinate based on that. So the way this is displayed to us in shading is as this colored map. The red being the x coordinate and the green be the y coordinate. So if I separate this out you can see that we just have two gradients going from left to right and top to bottom. Um, and there's no Z component in this coordinate space, it's two dimensional. This means that if you ever have a 3D object, you're always going to have seams where the um, object has to be cut in order to convert this 3D object into a 2D um, space. So if I add in a noise texture to demonstrate with that, if I try to do this, you see we get some stretching. I would have to add some cuts to this and then unwrap it, um, which would give me seams on the mesh, which you wouldn't get with the other coordinate spaces which are three-dimensional. Um, now you can't use the other coordinate spaces for image textures. I mean, technically it's possible, but it's just um, they're 3D coordinate spaces which make them a bit difficult to work with. So I'm going to add in a noise texture and demonstrate that with generated or object, you can get a 3D noise texture that runs across the whole object. And now to go over the difference between generated and object, essentially um, generated is uh, based on the bounding box of your mesh and that's just a cube that encompasses the entire mesh. Here it will just be the same cube as what we're working with but with um, say a Suzanne head it will be the cube around Suzanne. So with generated we have um, three dimensions, you can see we now have a blue dimension and if I separate these out you can see we get gradient from an X, the Y, and the Z, and that all combined allows us to use this in conjunction with a noise texture to produce this 3D noise. If I set the noise to 2D, you can see we get the same thing we get with the UVs, so that's just something to bear in mind. Now you'll notice that object immediately produces a different result, and it seems to be a much smaller scale, and the reason for this is object is an absolute um, coordinate system, so it's based on distance from the origin of your mesh, so wherever your origin point is of your mesh will be the center of your coordinate system. And you can see that if I move the origin by moving the object in edit mode, um, the coordinate system always starts from there. And it isn't clamped to one, whereas generated is clamped to a maximum value of one. So uh, essentially you will always get a gradient that goes from zero to one on the minimum to the maximum coordinate. Now this means in practice that when using generated, you will tend to see stretching because no matter what uh, length the object is, it will always go from zero to one. And if your object is non-uniform, that will mean that some lengths get a longer, more stretched out gradient than others. So therefore you will get stretched textures. When using object, you don't get this. It's because again, it's an absolute scale. It's not based on anything to do with the mesh other than its origin. Um, and this also means that the values can go well above one, which is why you see this at a smaller scale. Now I'm going to just make this a plane again so we can start focusing on the sand. 
And now I could use UVs for this, but I want to do this a bit more procedurally. And the coordinate system I'm going to choose to use is going to be object coordinates. And the reason for that is because I want the um, scale of the ripples in the sand to be absolute and not based on the size of the beach, for example. They should always be the same size no matter how big the plane is. Now I could just use a wave texture like this to create the sand dune effect that I'm going for using object coordinates. But I'm actually going to uh, create this effect from first principles. And the reason for this is it, it gives you a much better understanding of how it's made. And if you understand how it's made, it means you can make more complex shaders in the future. So I'm going to take the object output, separate it into its components. And then I'm going to pick a dimension to run these waves across. I'm going to use the X dimension because I want the waves to run this way. And now I'm going to use a math node and I'm going to set this math node to ping pong and set this to one. And what this essentially does is for every value on the um, coordinate space here, so we, we start at zero and go to say 10 over here and maybe minus 10 here. Every time the value reaches one, it will reset it back down to zero and then back up to one again. And that's what this ping pong is doing. And this fat scale value is just whatever value that happens at. So right now I just want it to happen at one and we just get this linear um, fall off between zero and one. And there are a couple of other ways to do this. We could use a fraction, um, which doesn't get us a gradient going back down to zero. It sort of cuts off in this sharp way. Um, or we could use a modulo function, which does a very similar type of thing to the fraction, but it allows you to change it to not be from one. Now I'm going to set this back to ping pong and set this to one again. And now in order to add some control over this, I want to use another math node before the ping pong, set this to multiply. And what this will allow us to do is control the number of repetitions because by increasing the value, we're making it more frequent that we're hitting one here. So the ping pong will repeat more often. Now to clean things up, I'm just going to use control H to hide unused outputs on these nodes. And now it's time to add some distortion to this, like we can do with the wave texture. And in order to do this, I could add it here and um, incorporate a noise texture in here. Um, but I'm going to incorporate one here. And whenever you want to add any sort of randomness or distortion, usually a noise texture is the way to go. So I'll add one in. And I want this to use the same coordinates as what's being used to generate this, so it's all consistent with itself. And I'm going to use a mix color node in between here. And the reason for this is it gives us a nice factor. Um, and a vector is essentially just three numbers, which is the same as what a color is. It's just three numbers, so Blender can use mix color nodes on vectors. It's quite useful. And instead of mix, I'm going to set this to add. And I'm going to plug the color of the noise texture into the B input. And you can see immediately we get some randomness occurring, but it's a lot, um, but there's a lot wrong with it. It's way too uh, high detail in scale and also too strong. So I'll turn the scale down on the noise texture to something like one. Maybe turn down the roughness to 0.2 and turn down the factor to control the strength. Maybe a bit stronger and a lower scale. And you could layer up multiple um, noise textures like this in order to get different levels of detail. I'll just try and do it all with the one for now. And now you see we've essentially recreated the wave texture from scratch, uh, but we could always add in any additional nodes or any more control that we wanted. For example, we could control the distortion more by adding in another noise texture setup, like so, and then making this, say, a much higher detail noise at a much lower strength, which we can't do normally on the regular wave texture. So there are benefits to doing this sort of um, from scratch. And I also think that it's interesting to learn how these things are made. So now that we have our little setup here, I'm just going to frame this using Control J. And I'll call this base pattern. So we're going to use this to drive a few different inputs into the principal shader node, most notably the um, displacement. So I'm going to add a displacement node, plug this into the displacement output. And now if I preview the principal shader, 
I'll plug the output of this ping pong straight into the height of the displacement. And now I want to turn on um, true um, geometry displacement for this. So in the material settings, I'm going to go under displacement settings and turn this from bump only to displacement and bump. And now you see the mesh moves. We just don't have enough geometry. So I'm going to subdivide this, then use shift R to repeat that until we have enough subdivisions to make this work. And I'll set the scale to 0.1 on the displacement. And now you can see that linear fall off I was talking about. We're sort of getting this triangle effect. Um, but it does look somewhat like sand already. I just want to be able to control this a little bit better. Um, so what I'm going to do is use a float curve node. And then uh, drag out around these uh, this point to uh, make the bottom a bit more curved. So we get this kind of effect. I'm also going to shade smooth on this. And then I'm going to use control 2 to add a subdivision modifier. Uh, set it to 1 maybe if it's getting a bit slow. And that should be a nice start for our beach. Maybe I want less waves going on. I'll turn that down. And now let's start looking at some color maps. So to start off with I'll just find a nice color that I'm, I like for this beach. Maybe something fairly bright. Something like that works quite nicely. So I'll add in an RGB node and then Control C hover over this color lets you copy it and then Control V paste it into this. I'll plug that into the base color and now I want to essentially use this map to vary this color slightly. So I'm going to use a mix color node and I'll change this from mix to multiply. And I'll plug the ping output of this ping pong into the B input and you can see that's just essentially making it darker at the peaks and lighter at the troughs. I think I might want to do the opposite to this. So I'm going to use a ramp, color ramp in between here. And just first of all invert it so that we get lighter as we go up. Set the interpolation from linear to ease. And then I might turn down the factor of this a bit more to control the strength of the effect. But overall I think that works pretty nicely. And now I think I want to add a little bit of overall noise to this. So I'm going to use another multiply. So I'll set this one to overlay. And now I'm going to use a noise texture again for some randomness. Again, I want to use object coordinates, so I'll duplicate that. To remove it from the frame, I'll use Alt P to remove parenting. Plug that into the vector. Now if I preview this noise texture, I want this to be a large scale, low detail noise. So I'll turn the roughness down and turn the scale down until I get the kind of effect I want. Plug that into the B input again. And now you can see we're just varying the color slightly across the whole thing. So we're not perfectly uniform anymore. Now I want to use a similar kind of noise to vary the overall height of the sand as well. So we're not so perfectly um, repeating. So after the float curve, I'm going to add a math node set to add. And you can see this will just offset this thing up and down. So if I copy this noise texture over, and plug that straight in and I multiply this noise texture you can see we make this a bit more bumpy. I'll untick normalize on this one so that it centers around zero and I can control the strength of this effect maybe turn the scale down and then I also want to add another math node after this add set to multiply and I'm going to use this same noise setup again, copy it over, and this will just control the strength randomly as well. And I'll actually turn on normalize again because I don't ever want the strength to be negative. I'll maybe make this a bit of a different scale to the other one as well. I think that's giving us a bit more randomness. And now I'll frame this whole little section and call this uh, displacement. 
and I'll frame this little top section and call this color. I'm using F2 to name these labels as well. And now for the little bit that I want to do for the bump and roughness, I don't actually need this map because I'm just going to do a high detail noise that runs across the whole thing. So I'll add in a noise texture again. Make sure I use object coordinates. And I'll preview this noise texture. And this time I want to turn the scale up. Something very high. Turn the detail up to 8 and the roughness up to 1. And this is just essentially some tiny little dots running across everything. And if I use a bump node, plug that into the height, not the normal, and then plug the normal output into the normal of the principled, preview it. You can see we get some bumpy sand. It's just way too strong. So I'm going to use the distance, turn this down to 0.01, maybe a bit higher, 0.05. And I think that works nicely enough. And now the roughness is currently uniform across the whole thing. I want to make it a bit more random. So I'm going to use this same noise texture, run through a color ramp. And now whatever the black values are, are going to be the really shiny points on this object. And the white values are going to be the really rough parts. So I'll actually flip the color ramp and do something like this. Plug this into the roughness. Now I don't want this to be as contrasty, so I'll bring the white value down to something like a value of 0.6 and the black value up to a value of 0.3 and maybe pull that down a little bit. Just a little bit of randomness on that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this beach shader. And hopefully this gives you a um, beginning of an understanding of how to start to use noises and coordinates to develop um, different shaders in Blender. You could use the same sort of line setup for various things. But yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. I hope this was useful to you and I'll see you in the next one.